What's going on everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. Woke up early this morning to a huge crypto sell-off. A little bit of speculation going around talking about large institu institutions selling their positions based on inflation worries. The market is selling off. I had talked to you guys on Sunday saying that the Fed minutes were set to be released Wednesday at 2 p.m. And a couple things to watch out for. So first of all, the Fed minutes are really just a, a, a detailed description of what happened at the previous meeting, which in this case was the end of April. However, some things have changed and there's also the talks about investors just not really buying what the Fed is saying based on what they're seeing out in the, you know, the economy right now. So in this video, guys, I want to clarify everything that is going on for you and also how you can help protect yourself going forward. All right, so stick around. You're not gonna wanna miss this. For those of you that are new to the channel, all I ask is to hit that like button and subscribe to join the family. Let's get rocking. First off, first thing I wanna talk about is the crypto market cap. It's sitting just under 1.7 trillion after reaching its high the day after Mother's Day of $2.5 trillion. It touched down at that $1.5 trillion mark and started to recover. Ethereum dropped down to, I think it was a low of 1890. It's gotten back up to about $2,700 to where it currently stands. So a rapid, rapid recovery. Not in all the coins, okay? Some of them didn't even take a, you know, a, 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 a big hit. Some of them recovered over 100% so far. So it's all had a little bit of speculation, but let's take a look at exactly where the market is going. Now, currently the NASDAQ is sitting down just half a percent, a little bit less than the Dow and a little less than where the S&P sits currently. The NASDAQ has struggled because naturally when worries of inflation happen, the tech sector, the high growth, the speculative stocks really get hammered the most okay so keep that in mind i had talked to you guys earlier a few months going back saying guys the huge rotation is happening the financials the travel stocks the beaten down stocks from covid 19 we're going to be great recovery plays going forward and i also know a lot of you guys back in february watch your portfolio take a huge huge blunder and it was a really good time for you guys to kind of you know um really, you know, reallocate some of your assets and begin to diversify. And I know a lot of you guys reached out to me and did that. So that is awesome. But let's talk about what is going on for the market. First thing I do want to mention, guys, is I told you in a previous video that I wanted to potentially buy a call option against the VIX. Go look it up, guys, if you're unfamiliar. The VIX is based on volatility. And when there's a lot of fear in the market, as there is today, the VIX tends to rise and buying a call option on the VIX is a great way to hedge uh, against your portfolio when it does get beaten down a little bit. However, the options, the contracts were a little bit expensive and mine, my limit price did not get filled. If any of you guys did get filled, you are definitely reaping the rewards. And if you are unfamiliar, keep that in mind going forward. Whenever there is, the Fed is speaking. It seems like the volatility is always happening lately. And buying the VIX, okay, or buying an option uh, on a call option on the VIX is a great way to hedge your portfolio. So the the minutes are are due at Wednesday at two o'clock. It's just under an hour and a half from where it stands today. And normally, guys, like I said, the minutes are just a recap of what happened at the meeting. However, a lot has changed in the economy since April 28th and 29th meeting. The ensuing weeks have brought a surprisingly weak jobs report and a stronger than expected consumer inflation report. So what they are looking for to happen today is just kind of like the strong inflation readings and signs of a worker shortage in recent weeks have fueled fears of inflation and roiled stock markets despite reassurances from Fed officials that the rise in prices would be temporary. I'm gonna to touch that in just a minute. There is no question that inflation worries have creeped into the investor mindset, which will weigh on the tech stocks and in all likelihood, we will see yields go up. So let's get back to that, the reassurance guys. The Fed has continued to reassure and they've given out their projections saying that inflation will be there. However, it is going to be slowly rising it's not going to be the, as bad as they thought and it's just going to be temporary and they gave their projections for this year next year and 2023 however investors are not buying it and just think about this from your point of view now i don't know where you guys live whether you're in the united states or outside of the united states but where i am in connecticut a couple things are going on one the price of gas has risen dramatically the price of a lot of groceries have, have risen okay the price of beef is more than doubled all right and not to mention the price of lumber which is fueling the housing market to go even crazier is insane 
okay i think lumber is up i think a sheet of plywood is up 500 percent also guys we have what is going on with the job market i want to highlight this as well a florida mcdonald's is paying people 50 dollars just to show up for a job interview now i understand uh some of this was done really just to be a, a statement but what's happening is you have also a workers that are not going back to work because of all the funding of the from the government they're still getting the 300 dollars extra from the, the the stimulus you have a child care credit that has been pumping out to families with children okay and what has happened is investors are just worried that that is only going to fuel inflation even farther all right so now what can you guys do to help protect yourselves well first off i want to un you guys to understand it's exactly what happens when inflation and stock prices so when inflation increases and you can go look us up in, in investopedia but when inflation increases purchasing power declines and each dollar can buy fewer goods and services like i'll give you my example that i just talked about a second ago plywood or osb a hundred dollars used to be able to get you six sheets now it can barely get you two okay so when inflation is on the upswing income stock prices generally decline and investors try to anticipate the factors that impact portfolio and performance which is something everybody should be doing to the best of their ability and make decisions based on their expectations and inflation is one of those factors that affect a portfolio so if you've been following me for a little while i have stressed to you guys that it's always good to have 20 percent cash on hand keep 20 percent of cash in your portfolio to be able to help buy the dip okay and it helped dollar cost average into positions you should always be dollar costing average into position and slowly getting out of positions especially in today's market the 2020 market is totally different and i know if you guys are new to investing this is a choppier market than we are in okay now if you've been following me and i talked to totally everybody in the group i now recommend it's slowly gone up from 25 percent to 30 percent to 35 percent cash on hand now with that cash on hand i still utilize to be able to make swing plays i'm beating down you know good value stocks that have just been beaten down from bad earnings or you know you know they've hit you know recent signs of support make some day plays if you're under the pdt rule definitely be careful with that but make some day plays make some swing plays but i get out of them quick to really maintain that 35 percent cash on hand even a play like tesla where i am you know my my average with tesla is much lower than the stock price it is now i might add to my position as, as it's gotten beaten down and then as it rises back up to maybe let's say hit that next sign of resistance at 700 720 dollars price point get out of it to be able to maintain that 35 percent cash on hand what's happening and not only with the institutions but also with retail investors which is a big worry uh, of other inv uh, of investors in general is that the amount of money that is held off on margin okay it's not just institutions it's also retail investors and what what is a worrisome that is what happens is if people are so high leveraged on margin that inevitably when the stock prices go down you get margin called which you don't have the cash to be able to cover that call so you have to sell a security and and then your the selling just continues and it's like a snowball and it just gets bigger and bigger and it just moves faster and faster and faster and that's a big worrisome from a lot of investors so my advice to you guys is to tread lightly be patient cautious with your entries you don't have to get a visit take a position every day okay if you are new to options guys come join the group it's a i have an entire options course 25 videos there's over three hours explaining everything from beginner to complex option strategies that you can profit in any type of market okay so if you're interested guys please come take a look that's it for this video guys be careful be patient i'll see you in the next one